Right, so last lesson we looked at coastal features in the beginning of erosion and those four types of erosion and how they created certain things. So if we look here, if we were going to put these in an order, we put, we'd be looking at this one first because this is our smaller result of erosion. We've got a cave, the beginnings of an arch. Now we know that subaerial processes and erosion, probably hydraulic action, it's going to smash into those rocks and create what we have here as an arch. Okay, that's actually Durdle Door in Dorset. Now we know again, subaerial processes, wind and rain are also to hit, there to factor in and erosion, potentially hydraulic action. And here at the base as well, weakening the rock and the softer rock, which is already quicker, will then result in a stack. That's a, a stack from the needles in the Isle of Wight. It's made of chalk. And then we know through the abrasion and hydraulic action, the base of this stack will be undercut and fall down. We get our sunken features or stumps. Okay, so moving forward, I want to look at two other features that are formed before you crack on with your lesson. The first one's are headlands and bays. Now, if I press play here, you can see on the bottom, it says wave attack. Now, we think which of those three strands of rock are going to be the softer rock. Well, as you see from the animation, as the wave attacks, it attacks the softer rock and erode that quicker than the harder rock, which means what begins to be created is an inequality in the rate of erosion, and actually an inequality in how much rock is being eroded away and left behind. So we end up with a bay. And as you can see, that bay starts to be created by the erosion, slowly over time, weakening that softer rock. The harder rock here and here is being eroded, but not as quick as the softer rock. And what we get is a headlands and bays. Think about how helpful bays are to humans and how helpful headlands are to humans. And what we can learn from this process moving forward in terms of coastal management and coastal development, especially in the United Kingdom and more specifically in the southwest of England where we live at the moment. So there are your headlands and bays and these ones, moving on to, are called wave cut platforms. Oh, fabulous. They are so unbelievably beautiful and it sounds so, so weird to say that. So what we have here, the erosion happens, it undercuts part of your headlands, okay, and that can be through hydraulic action, usually through abrasion as well, the rocks rubbing up against, and the rock above begins to erode and fall. Now that rock in the water is being swirled around by the currents, so that process of attrition is also happening to that rock. And as you can see here, more and more falls, more and more falls, until it becomes weaker and weaker. So the original position of the cliff retreats, you get something called a wave cut notch. This thing has been cut out of the cliff. So at high water mark, there's more erosion happening than at low water mark. So the tide comes in and out. Then over time, that will, piece of undercut rock will collapse and we will get a wave cut platform. This platform here is where the original position of the cliff would have been. So we can historically look at how much erosion has happened over the years and that can feed into our planning for the future. Some examples of wave cut platforms here you can see. We have our cliffs, the area of recession and then this at low water mark or low tide is the wave cut platform. Another great example is here. You can see here we're beginning to get features like caves where you can see erosion has happened. All right, and then finally a beautiful picture here. You can see the sunken nature of that a high water mark. It's very spooky, very mythical, very mysterious. Some more sunken features over here as well. So you're almost the utilization of this for humans and for coastal resorts could be areas of tourism and aspects of tourism and and and, and even muses for um, sort of more creative outlets like art and poetry and writing and stories and stuff like that which is a great way of people monetizing so making money out of their area without harming the area so there you go so we know the processes that form these things we have uh, 
hydraulic so all these features hydraulic action or pressure isn't it abrasion attrition and solution which is your acid erosion along with the salt within the water so your lesson task one is that a bubble task okay so how many words keywords links to our last couple of lessons can you create from here now you know how bubble works um it's all about each letter oh, bubble scrabble not bubble sorry uh, each letter has a certain value attached to it okay so if your name was ben and you made the name or the word ben that would be three for the b one for the e and one for the n so a cost of five points then for the highest score of points Give yourself two or three minutes, don't go over that, and then see how many words you can make. Challenge on that one is try and use 50% or 100% of those words you've made in two sentences linked to our last two lessons. That's a real challenge. Uh, task two is writing three sentences about these sunken features so we know what they are. Okay. How does it help us predict and plan for future coastal development? Task three, now you're going to see some five images and I want you to state on your sheet whether or not they are created by erosion or deposition. Okay, so it says A, B, C, D, and E. And the final task is going to take you a little bit longer this one because it's a longer written answer. Now you've gained some more understanding and learning about coastal features. So, using the, that aspect of point, evidence, explain and link, Key question is, would you like to live on the southwest coastline of the United Kingdom? So, what's your point? Yes, you would. No, I wouldn't. And be forthright with your point. And direct with it, okay? The idea of oracy and vocabulary. Evidence, so location examples, uh, the examples of features and things uh, and aspects like that you've learnt about and how you could feed that into your answer. Explain, you know, use what we've learnt and then link. Make sure it links together and it reads well. That's very important. So underneath you have the success criteria of what you need to do to be successful. Uh, communicate with each other on the stream. But, uh, sorry, communicate with each other. Communicate with myself if you need support. And um, yeah, enjoy. Really looking forward to seeing some of your work. Uh, speak later. Bye.